after the fat man and circuit proof. My, my, uh, goal today is to reiterate how I visualize a Pythagorean triple, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Uh, I will come up with my method. The, the, the Fermat book that I read said the Pythagoreans even came up with a systematic way to find all Pythagorean triples, and in so doing they showed that there's an infinite number of them. Well, I came up with my own way to systematically find all Pythagorean triples. Maybe I covered them all, maybe I haven't. Um, but I'd like to share that with you for what it's worth. And then I'd like to show, here, I'll show how to, how to start with one Pythagorean triple and expand it out so that we can discover all Pythagorean triples. But then I want to show also how to start with a big Pythagorean triple and reduce it down until you get down back down to the basic one. And then I propose that we go on and start looking for analogies in, I don't know a name for them, but cube triples. So let's see why this works and why a to the third plus b to the third equals c to the third doesn't. And let's go at it like artists, shall we? Let's start with sugar cubes. What do we mean when we say a squared plus b squared equals c squared? What we mean is this. a squared, in this case a is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. a squared is 16. So a square that's 4 on a side, plus b squared, a square that's 3 on a side, can be that, that this number of squares can add up to make a third perfect square without crumbling any sugar cubes. And as you can see, it totally can. All right? So what we say, what we mean when we say a squared plus b squared equals c squared is that in the case of 4 squared plus 3 squared equals 5 squared, that the same number of sugar cubes, the number of sugar cubes in 5 squared can be split into two perfect squares. Okay? That's, that's all we mean. Now, a lot of people like to show this in the following way. They like to say, Okay, well, here's a square. What can we add to it to make another square? And they usually show something like this, right? And they say, now, can we rearrange this to make a third square? All right? But what they're missing with this visualization is that you only ever see two of the squares at the same time. For instance, here you're seeing the a square and the c square. Here you're seeing the a square and the b square. But you're never seeing all three at the same time. So what, what's the relationship of the, three, of the three squares? Well, I have a way that I like to visualize it. Here we can see all three squares. All right? This is... This is a squared, this is b squared. And when we chunk them together, we, we dig a pit out of the middle of one of the squares, paste the crud onto the end, and we can see the c square. So we can see the a square here, we can see the b square here, and we can see the c square here. Now this might be a little bit clearer on the board. But let me just show you something before we leave the sugar cubes. So that there's an interesting little area that I think is key. And it keeps showing up. And that is this little value here. This little chunk that you have to take out of one of the squares. It's the same even if you're taking the chunk out of this one. So, for instance, in this, in this case, you're digging out 4 
from this one. But even if you were digging out of this one, you'd still have to dig out four. It's the same four. They overlap. See? I call this value Q. I call, I call this Q and this Q squared. And a, a fun way to, to uh, another way to think of Q is it's A plus B minus C. Okay, let's see if that really works. Here's A, here's B, and our C value is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So coming back, our Q value is 2. Okay, so A plus B minus C gives you your value for Q. It's something that I just thought about a lot. I uh, haven't really got a good way to, to illustrate it, but you guys can figure it out. All right. I think that there's something very magical and special about this primal Pythagorean triple, which is three, four, five. But if it didn't exist, if three, four, five wasn't the Pythagorean triple, then no other Pythagorean triple would exist. I think that it exists on a fluke. I think that it exists somehow. Now, I haven't proven this, but I think that the reason that 3, 4, 5 works is because there's 3, this is our A, here's 4, this is our B, Here's five, because there's C, and I think that the reason that it works is because our Q value here is four, and I think that the fact that I call these P, Q, and R, and I think the fact that there are two of these twos, that you're adding two plus two, and it and 2 plus 2 is 2 squared, I think that that unique quality is what allows this thing to work. And I think that later when we get into cubes, you, it might have worked if 3 plus 3 plus 3, or 3 times something plus 3 times something plus 3 times something, equal 3 times something cubed. But it doesn't. So we'll see if that really is the root of it someday. Well, actually, if we do, we've solved the world's hardest math problem. So, <laughs> but we probably will. Mm. I mean, why not?